Hi, I'm Jalen Rose, and welcome to the Renaissance Man podcast, proudly presented by the New York Post, a show where we cover trends in fashion, entertainment, current events, and everything in between. My next guest is The Sound of Music, a three-time Grammy Award-winning producer, recording artist, songwriter, and the mind behind some of greatest some of rap's soul, hip hop's greatest hits and albums. He got a new single out right now. It's called Scholar, featuring 24 and Devin Morris. He has an upcoming EP due to be released this fall. It's my honor to welcome Hit Boy to yes, the sir, show. Yes, sir. Respect, man. That was an incredible intro, man. I appreciate that. Thank you, family. Well deserved. And I'm a huge fan, and I know about your story, but I'm going to ask you the questions like I don't know anything. So first thing, what was it like for you growing up in Cali, and when did you realize you had a passion for music? Um, it was it was solid growing up out here, man. I, um, <clears throat> my my uncle was in a group called Troop. So early on in my uh, you know my early days, I watched his whole process. Like I got to go to video shoots, I got to go to studio sessions, like you know the fashion, just the whole lifestyle. Like I I got to see that you know side of things. So I was already kind of getting bred for it without even realizing it. It was, it was just downloading it to my DNA. So that was a good thing about, you know, just being out here, just all the creativity and the people that, you know, was doing something, you know, with music or just something in the arts. So in Scholar, you talk about dropping out. So I have to ask you, when did you realize that it was going to be music or nothing? Honestly, man, I uh, I would say 10th grade because I uh, I was hoping I actually uh, played basketball my whole ninth grade year. And then I was uh, about to start playing my sophomore year and uh, I started making beats like a couple weeks before the season started. And so I told the coach, this is 2000, like what, two, 2003. So. You know, it wasn't that popular for people to be making music or albums out of their bedroom at that time. So when I went back and told the coach, like, you know, I'm not I'm not hoping no more. I'm about to go home and make beats every day. He was like, what are you talking about? Like, he was confused. And I just knew back then I was like, man, I'm doing this one way or another. I don't care how I go down. Like, I'm going to make music. So tell me about that process. What school? When did you decide, once you decided, like, where were you doing the beats? Like, what was your first beat? Like, talk to me about that process. Yeah. I was going to uh, Colton High School out in the Inland Empire. I went there for my ninth grade, 10th grade. And then actually, in uh, when I was in 11th grade, I realized that if I go to a continuation school that I can get out of school early and then that would give me more time to make music. So I, I, I went and asked my mom if I could do that. And she was with it. She was supportive. And that was another thing, like, you know, having the support of my mom, she, um, you know, she would let me make music all hours, man. Like, loud as I pretty much want to her friends will come through even family members will come through and be like like why do you let him just make this random noise like it's just too loud like what's going on and she just was like happy that I was in the crib doing something productive and uh so yeah that was dope so your versatility in this space is unmatched you credit it right now with Beyond on Beyonce's new project uh, you work that's, with that's, Mariah that's, Carey that's, that's still on the hush. Oh, okay. Well, I, I mean, I found that on the internet. I found that no, on the no, internet. No, I know, I know, I know. I just like to like, until her album drop, I'm not, you know, I can't get my hopes up because that's that's like, I feel like any producer, any genre, whether it's rap, rock and roll, R&B, pop, like that's, they're all submitting music to Beyonce. So you got millions of people to beat out to even, you know, get on the album. So that's just, if I, you know, if it really go down, it's an honor, but I still... I don't, it's like unbelievable still to me, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, to be in consideration. But I just want to talk about your versatility. Like, you mentioned, like, having a family member in Troop and doing songs with Ariana Grande and Rihanna. But, like, hip-hop as an artist, but also as a producer, Yay, Jay, Game, Kendrick, my brother Big Sean. Like, yes. where did your versatility come from? Um, honestly, just uh, staying a fan of music, being a fan of music and staying a fan. Like I, um, 
you know, I like, you know, not to say like I don't take myself serious, but it's like, you know, I'm always kind of in a fan mode. I want to enjoy music still, like even though I make it myself. So I feel like that that um just that love for it just allows me to dive into you know different bags, and that's um that's something that I just kind of practice as well. Like you know, I never wanted to sound the same. I want I want every beat to cater. Like you know, when I'm doing Nas King's Disease or Magic, it's a it's a specific thing. Like I'm not giving him the same beats that I'm going to give, you know, whoever else. It's just like, I really wanted to be in that pocket for that artist. Let's talk a little bit more about Big Sean, my brother, our brother. I was exactly. so very blessed that he shouted me on What A Life. Y'all crushed that. He's Word, been a guest son. on this show. Him and his love. Congrats bride. to him too, man. He yes. got a seed on the way. That's beautiful. Yes. Man. I love How beautiful, it. right? I well deserved. Absolutely. Yeah. So what has it been like working with him and following his careers, following his yeah, career. Nah, yeah, I've been uh, working with Sean for a long time, actually, like over 10, 11 years, probably longer than that. And, uh, you know, our bond just like is developed, you know, on a friendship level, but just, just on a music level, I feel like he's pushed me to the point where it's like, you know, don't settle on your first idea. You know what I'm saying? Like he might do something that I think is incredible. And he like, he's he'll take it, listen to it for a few days and be like, nah, I think I can level that up. I can, you know, say it in a quicker, more clever way. And, you know, just to see him put these words together like that, it's like unbelievable. And it's just like pushed me to just like take a little more time with what I'm saying and what I'm doing musically and just like don't settle on the first idea. Just keep flushing it out, building it out until it's his best form, you know? Absolutely. You'll appreciate this analogy. So drafting Magic, to me, boosted Kareem and kept him young. They won their first game, Magic jumping all on them, hugging them. Yeah. To me, that's what you did for Nas in a lot of ways. Like all-time great. And like Dre, very particular about when they're going to put stuff out. Yeah. And then you guys give us back-to-back -back classic yeah. albums with King's Went Disease. Love. Talk about that process of working with the legendary Nasir Jones. Man, I can't even believe that we are on our fourth album already in two years, man. Like, just it's just been a, a natural momentum, a organic just wave. Like, we, we're not forcing it. We want to get to the studio and make music. Like, you know, I feel like, you know, sometimes you'll be in a process and like, you know, we on our fourth joint now, like sometimes you might lose momentum, but like even just like, you know, going through the KD3 stuff, like the next album, I'm just like, man, we, we really in that groove still. And it's just a beautiful thing for him to still be inspired for all that he's accomplished and who he is, you know, so just we kind of like on the same level, we just feel like we got something to prove like to ourselves, you know, that we can just keep leveling up the product every time. And that's been like the general consensus is that like, wow, KD2 is better than KD1, Magic better than KD2. So it's like, that's kind of the, that's the bar we set. Absolutely. And for, for artists that were lost way too young, by the way, anybody that's, you know, dying very young is relative, but I mean like yeah. artists, so like in Detroit, we had Blade Icewood. We lost him way too young. In the Bay, they had Mac Dre, lost way too mm. young. And that's how I feel about Nipsey. And exactly. the thing I loved about him so much is he sounded so much older than he actually was. Like he was so mature. Yeah, that, that's that knowledge, man. He just was like, you know, street smart, book smart really into like even just like you know his his latest years like him going so heavy on tech and just being a part of like the newest waves like working with you know just with his dispensary with his clothes the way he was rolling things out like he was forward thinking so he was you know obviously wise behind beyond his years do you have like a song that you listen to or that you reminisce about or that you play that Y'all did a lot of stuff together, but you like, this is the one. I mean, I would have to for sure say Racks in the Middle, because like we just like, it was such a connection at that time. Like we had, we was cool for a long time. We had worked on other projects. He has, you know, rapped on some of my, my stuff. I produced on his mixtapes, his, uh, you know, his projects. And for us to come together and make Racks in the Middle in his last days and just how much he was committed to getting over here to the studio and, and really locking in with me and really flushing out 
the verses, like him doing three verses on his, like, mm. you know, really his last song. Like people don't even do three verses no more. Mm. So for him to want to get that out and it, it, you know, it go on to win the Grammy and just like, just be revered so crazy is, it's like, it was a movie for me, for real. There are so many people that look like us that want to do what we're doing. They want to yeah. work in sports, play sports, be in entertainment, be a producer, be an artist. You do it all, but it's only 24 hours in the day. Can you please acknowledge for the audience the time, the energy, the sacrifices you make oh, in man. order to not only be successful, but to continue to be great at your craft? Oh, man, it's a... Uh... That's like half of the whole world of what's going on. Just like the struggle is a part of it. Just like, you know, figuring out, you know, scheduling, like you got family time. Like I got a two year old son, you know, so sometimes, you know, I might have to bring him to the studio. I'm, I'm, I'm working on, you know, game album. I'm working on Nas album. I'm working with Big Sean. Like he might be like sitting next to them while they writing a verse. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm over here producing. And it's just like, I just got to do what I got to do to just like have him be a part of the energy because that's what's going on right now. So it's like really by any means necessary, man, you got to really just apply, you know, as much energy as energy as you possibly can just because especially if you want to achieve greatness like that's not an easy thing to do like us sitting here making the, the king's disease albums like we're not just sitting here playing around like we're thinking about every single step every single line every single piece of music like it's like a lot of dedication and sacrifice so i want to be the next hit boy and i don't have a blank check to go buy all of the necessary equipment in my mind. So are there a couple of things you can say to an aspiring producer that a couple of things that they can get to kickstart their opportunity to start making and producing stuff? Yeah, I mean, I honestly feel like it's easier than ever these days. Like, you know, it was starting to get, you know, a lot easier around my era when I was coming up, you know, trying to be a producer. But now I feel like you can go on YouTube and you can download sounds. You can go on Google and easy, you know, easily download programs to make beats with. So just utilize everything, you know, and if you don't have the budget, just Google the free version until you can afford to pay for it. Cause that's what, you know, I did. And a lot of producers that, you know, people respect, they started that way as well. Like we was on them line wires and we was on Kaza mm -hmm. and yeah. just really like downloading the free yep. FL, whatever we could get our hands on. So now you can do that and you could also go to YouTube and you can watch tutorials of other people making beats and just kind of get a step-by-step, -step, you know, thing with it versus back in the day, you couldn't really do that. You had to learn by just pulling up on people and just hope that you can get around, you know, somebody that's on a professional level. But now you can, you can literally watch me make beats on YouTube. You can watch Boy Wonder, you can watch Metro Boomin. So it's like, that's so much free game. And it's just like a free world at this point. You can make a song and just upload it yourself now to Apple Music and all that. So just take advantage of everything. How important is it for you? Because you do it in everything as an artist and as a human being you 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 yeah. you you represent LA Southern California 10 toes down your fashion your vocab everything so what inspired you musically as you started to get into the art man definitely like um it was it, at first it was the R&B like my, you know my family obviously my, my uncle being in the R&B group but him playing Mary J Blige and then my my grandma playing like Aretha Franklin Etta James and stuff like that but then it developed you know early 90s when I'm like turning like five six years old I'm hearing a lot of gangster rap so murder was the case was like my favorite thing to watch every day at the school you know what I'm saying uh the VHS I had the VHS the Snoop Dogg tape and then um uh today was a good day like I would rap that song for my people's like at family functions and just a lot of gangster rap real west coast heavy influence so that's all rooted in me but then my, my I feel like my versatility comes from the fact that in my you know my beginning stages I was listening to a lot of R&B and pop and just like those big chord changes and drum breaks and just like the musicality of it all but then I kind of got the linear approach from hearing the gangster rap so it's kind of all mixed in with me what about being a dope producer Grammy award three-time Grammy award-winning producer but you also a dope artist 
Word. back in traffic, scholars out. Like, oh just God. talk about Corsi, that. Man, I got the course to see on right now. I don't know if y'all can see that. Yeah. Me, and Dom, yeah, me and Dom Kennedy, that's one of my closest homies and closest collaborators, man. Um, Just, um, I'm locked in, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like kind of just all one thing for me. It's just music. So whether I'm able to help songwriter, I'm able to help produce, or I'm laying a verse or, or a hook, whatever it may be, I just want it to be a quality piece of music. And you're doing your thing. It seems like a song I saw recently that you did with Game was personal. I love my life was never easy, yeah. but it seemed like that had an extra bounce to it. That I was a moment. Talk to me about that moment from NWA and Easy and Chuck right. Taylor right. and yeah. you and yeah. like talking through doing that. From Compton, just the whole yes. connection with the easy sample. And then, you know, me not, you know, working with Ye for a while. And then that being to find like the connection that linked us back in, we was able to put that song out and it went crazy. That was just a real good moment, man. And uh, got a credit game for putting that, you know, battery in everybody back and having the energy and booking the studio time and really just digging deep with what he, you know, believe in. How important now that you and Ye have been back in the studio together, like how important do you feel like that was for the get for the culture, for the for the industry? I mean, we made some legendary stuff, man. So it's like just kind of just like something to look forward to. That's how I look at it. Like, you know, now that we got like a, a cool line of communication, it's like you never know what could happen. So just like, you know, just having that fresh energy and just like knowing what was possible, like knowing that we can make a, a Paris level record or we can make a click level record. Like just like ain't no telling what's next. Absolutely. And again, I appreciate you taking the time. I know you're a busy man, but before I let you get out of here, here, boy, and by the way, I'm going to write a column about this in the New York Post as well, because okay. I appreciate you taking the time. I have a okay. rapid fire segment sponsored by the Tri-State Cadillac Dealers. You ready to do this? Let's go. Name an up and coming musical artist that more people should know about. I'm going to say the homie Spank Nitty James. He from the IE, around the area I'm from. Yeah. What's your go-to food spot when you're in Pasadena? Pasadena. Wow. That's a good one. Um, I'm going to say the Roscoe's on Lake. Yes. Yes. Man. You've already worked with so many big names, as I've acknowledged. Who's one musician you haven't worked with that you love to? Man, I'm gonna say Kodak Black. I say it, I say it all the time. I think we if we ever linked up, it'd be crazy. He crushed it on Kendrick. Yeah, for sure. Jeez, hearing them, they they went crazy. Yeah, no, nah, he's he one of them ones, man. Yes, last, yes. And lastly, your EP is going to be released this fall, and I can't wait for it. What can fans expect to hear from your new music? <clears throat> Um, they can expect to hear my perspective on, you know, on my life. You know, they can expect to hear some some fly talk and they can expect to hear some quality beats, man. Just like fresh flows, fresh ideas, man. I'm, uh, I'm hyped to release it. Well, I know you're always in the studio and I spend time in L.A. So hopefully I get a chance to come break bread, watch oh, you man. work. And I appreciate Anytime. you joining the show. 